All right, I'm back again. Just thought I'd do a video on this wicked devil here, Richard Pankowski. And he actually says something very, very wicked and vile. And this is the common fruit you'll see with the Reuben Israel, that those types of guys. Because Reuben Israel says the same type of stuff. And you see, a lot of these street preachers, I call them street papists. The reason why is because they're just preaching Roman Catholicism. That's all they're doing. And they have, they have the same, you know, just violent mentality of Roman Catholicism. But uh, Reuben Israel, in his one uh, video I have on my channel called Jesus Jesus Saves from Hell, there's a video on there called uh, Reuben Israel Thanks God That Catholic Priests Molest Little Boys. And, you know, you'll see this common thing where, like, Reuben Israel and these other guys that kind of follow him, they'll often tell, you know, women, oh, you deserve rape, you deserve this, you deserve to be sodomized or whatever. You see, this is the kind of perverted, you know, mentality that comes out of these, these uh, wicked devils, comes out of their mouths. They will essentially, you know, insinuate, you know, oh, get raped, you know, do this, do that. They'll basically tell immodest women who are dressed, you know, obviously like harlots with the attire of a harlot. They'll say all kinds of wicked things to them and tell them to, like, just get breast cancer and hope you get, you know, all this different stuff. And it's not the heart of a person who's trying to convert people. It's not the heart of a, what you call a soul winner or an evangelist. This is the heart of a nasty, wicked, vile papist. That's all it is. It's Roman Catholicism. The same kind of murderous mentality towards sinners. You know, where's the grace? Where's the preaching of the gospel to them? Where's the good news of the gospel? It's not there. It's all just a bunch of railing and all just a bunch of just nasty name calling and just, you know, carnal, fleshly uh, attitudes. That's all it is. But we're going to see from this video where Pinkowski actually tells a Christian woman who I do believe is saved to get sodomized. I mean, and a bunch of other wicked, disgusting things I'm not even going to repeat. I mean, this is the kind of filthy garbage that comes out of these wicked devils' mouths. It just shows they're not born again. They, do not, they have not experienced a new birth. Because nobody who's experienced a new birth who's been saved for a while will say this kind of wicked, disgusting stuff. I mean, when I was a lost atheist, I never said this kind of vile stuff. Even as a lost atheist, I would have never even thought about saying this kind of stuff. These guys are just, you know, I call them religious atheists because that's all they are. They're, they're atheists who are preaching religion and just using religion religion to make a mo make money, essentially. These guys don't have jobs. You know, Pankowski, he lives off donations. He doesn't actually work. You know, he works, quote unquote, by just doing a live stream where he rails on people and doing his little street preaching, which is nothing more than just railing, preaching their false gospel of Roman Catholicism, false gospel of works. But I'm just going to play this video. It's about a two minute long rant. He just does. And then watch how he just totally changes from angry to just back to normal, which, you know, Eric Love pointed out in his video that, you know, it's a, kind of a sign of split personality disorder, which could could be indication there's devils in this guy, which I would not be surprised. He's very wicked and nasty, but let's get, let's get start this video. By Antifa, by a bunch of limp wristed simps. You ran away. Well, brother, you know, we're just not called for that. If Until it comes time to actually do it. Instead, you'll pee your pants in fear. You Christians that would allow a group of people to come and pepper spray your 10-month-old, your 1-year-old, I don't care who it is. If you run away from that while they're doing stuff like that, you are not a man. It, it's actually kind of funny, too, because a lot of these guys are pacifists. They don't believe in self-defense, but then when they're attacked, oh, you're, why are you running away? Kind of a hip hypocritical mentality right there. Very Just blatant hypocrites. You know, and by the way, pacifism is totally a satanic. And yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not just throwing around that word satanic lightly. Pacifism is of the devil because you have a right to self-defense. Okay, uh, First, Second Thessalonians chapter one verse six says we can, you know, put tribulation. Paraphrasing, of course, we can have tribulation and anguish upon those that do evil to us. Okay, read the passage; it's all right there. You know, we have every right to self-defense. Okay, we don't have the right to go out and be like the Roman Catholics or the, or the Muslims or the Hindus and go out and kill people if they don't convert. But if someone if someone comes at me with a weapon or a knife and I have kids there, yeah, I'm gonna defend them, even if they're not my kids. If they're some other, you know, street preacher's kids, I'm gonna defend them. I'm not just gonna sit there and be pacifist. So just funny how he he goes up about that when a lot of these street papists are pacifists. Very very ironic. You, I seriously doubt you're even a Christian. There's no Christian that's going to allow his wife or his child to be pepper sprayed and do nothing about it. You don't want to fight? I get that. No one's saying you got to. But the least you could have done, 
The least you could have done was pick up one of those poles and at least keep them at bay while the women and children left. You could have done that. That's how bad things have gotten. And it's funny too, because a lot of these street papists, they're not being persecuted because they're actually preaching the gospel and speaking, speaking truth. They're being persecuted because they're being a bunch of nasty jerks. That's, that's, that's what it comes down to. There's no nice way to put it. They're just being a bunch of nasty jerks. You see, when you're preaching the gospel and preaching real truth and preaching against sin and preaching against wickedness, you're going to face opposition. But these guys don't face opposition because of that. They're facing opposition in spite of that. They're facing opposition because they're just a bunch of nasty jerks and they taunt people and they just pick fights with people. That's all they do. So just trying to bolster up his uh, little persecution complex. But while you sit there in your comfy churches, this is going on. But your pastor is telling you how bold they are, how they're going to take America back. They've been saying it since January. It is now eight months into it. When are they going to do it? These are pastors that are too damn lazy to even go to. Too damn lazy. Nice use of profanity right there. You know, damn in the Bible is never used as a profanity word like he did. He uses it. But, oh, but he's a godly Christian. No, he's not. You know. Uses, uses profanity. A lot of these street papists, they just use profanity left and right. They're, they're, they're totally disgusting. The wickedness that comes out of their mouths, disgusting. I'm going to cover some scripture on that after I'm get, I get done with this wicked papist here. To an abortion mill down the street to even rescue one baby. Instead, all they do is make excuses and how they're too busy to save the life of children in their town. They're too busy to stand against wickedness, pedophilia, sex trafficking that happens in their town. But they love America. And they're going to do something real soon. Do you have any idea... If you hate people, it's equal to murder in God's eyes. That's a lie, Ginger. It says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Don't twist scripture to fit your little... You know what? Just just go. Seriously. Go. You're the reason why Christians are getting their, their butts handed to them. Uh, no, because you're a nasty jerk. That's why. Not because you're preaching the truth. Not because it's, it's because of this, this Ginger girl you're referring to. Because you're just a nasty jerk. You know? You're not preaching the gospel. You're not preaching any truth. You're preaching your false gospel of works, of, of self-righteousness, of you have to merit your salvation by your your righteousness. You know, totally Jesuit doctrine. But it's, it's just ridiculous. Never takes any resp responsibility, but he's too prideful to admit that. He's a child of pride. You know, Job, uh, I believe it's, let me go to the scripture real quick. I'm sure I have the right reference. Job chapter, it was verse 41, 34. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Now in context, it's referring to Satan. He's a king over all the children of pride, according to Job 41, verse 34. Pankowski is a child of pride. It's that simple. Let me show you another interesting scripture that kind of ties into all this. That really kind of shows the downfall of uh, Richard Pankowski, warriors for Christ. Yeah, he's warriors for the Antichrist. That's what he's, that's what he's fighting for. Obadiah chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalteth thyself as the eagle, and thou uh, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down, uh, that saith the Lord. Thence will I bring thee down. You know, you're going to be prideful and say, look how good I am, but really, God's going to bring you down. God's going to humble you, and you're not going to enjoy it when he humbles you. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 16. Let's go there in our in the word of God. Of course he, he would say, Oh, you're a King James only, you know, cult cult member, which you know he's promoting the, the modern Vatican versions, which explains a lot of his heresies. Jeremiah 49 verse 16. That a terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O that dwellest uh, in the clefts of the rock, and that holdest the height of the hill. The, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. And you exalt yourself, you're gonna humble, you know, not gonna humble yourself, you're gonna exalt yourself, God's gonna bring you down. You'll be abased. But when you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. It's that simple. See the parable in Luke chapter, I believe it's verse 18, verses 9 to 14 on that. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Jer uh, James chapter, I believe it's 4, verse 6, and uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Let me just make sure I have the right reference there. I, I, I don't have the best memory, so I have to just check the references sometimes. Yeah, James chapter 4, verse 6. 
Beca uh, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Yeah, James 4, 6. Excuse me, my memory is not the best, but I have a bad memory. But yeah, Pankowski is prideful, and it's going to bring him down. It's going to be his downfall. Let's continue. You want to be going to love the world so much? Then go love them. Again, bend over and let the sodomites sodomize you like do each other, because that's all you are good for. You script. Listen, look, listen to this filth that comes out of his mouth. Look, let's just rewind this for a second. Let's see what he says there. I mean, this is the kind of filth that comes out, out of Reuben Israel, uh, Jesse Morel, all these guys. I, mean, I would not be surprised if these guys are just a bunch of sexual perverts behind closed doors. You know, getting ahead of myself. But let's listen to that disgusting filth he says again. The reason why Christians are getting their, their butts handed to them. You want to be going to love the world so much? Then go love them. Again. Bend over and let the sodomites sodomize you like do each other because that's all you are good for. You scream. Now, in light of what Reuben Israel said about, you know, oh, we thank God that Catholic priests molest little boys, you know, given that a lot of the perversion that comes out of these guys' mouths, I would not be surprised one bit if these guys were all just secretly sexual perverts behind closed doors. I would not be surprised one bit. I mean, saying just how you can just blurt out filth like that, just. With, with just no discretion, just, bleh, just just out of nowhere, just I hope you get sodomized. It's disgusting, absolutely disgusting. This is not this is not the the mouth of a saved Christian. This is the mouth of a lost devil, a lost papist devil. You know, he just he, he just again, even when I was an atheist, you know, I I said some pretty disgusting things when I was an atheist. Even as an atheist, I would have never even dreamed of saying something filthy like this. And I'm not being prideful. I'm just saying. That's how I was not an atheist. I mean, I, I made a lot of dirty jokes when I was an atheist, but never once, never once, you know, did me or my atheist friends ever joke about, you know, or, or tell someone to go get raped or sodomized. That's just, that's disgusting. Only, like a reprobate, like EJ Love said, a reprobate. Only a reprobate would say something like that. You know, I, I could go off of it for a while, but let's continue. Scripture twisting Jezebel. I, I can't stand when people twist the word of God. And by the way, if you esteem a Christian lower than a sinner, that's what makes you a murderer in God's eyes, Ginger. You're the murderer. You're judgmental, which you called me, which makes you a hypocrite, by the way. And you love the world. You're an enemy of God. Sit down, shut your mouth, go back to Joel Osteen's church. Okay, so I have this video up here. It's about 19 minutes long, guys. I'm going to play it for you. Hey, notice that. Notice how he just totally changes his personality. Notice how he's ranting, raving, and then just out of nowhere, huh, changes to then all calm and nice. That's what you call a split personality disorder, which is a warning sign of devil possession. Okay, let's watch that again. Let's watch how he just totally changes his uh, personality. Just out of nowhere. Watch this. And you love the world. You're an enemy of God. Sit down, shut your mouth, go back to Joel Osteen's church. Okay, so I have this video up here. It's about 19 minutes long, guys. All right, just went to get a glass of water. I was kind of thirsty, but let's get back right into this disgusting garbage that Pankowski says on his wicked little live stream he does, just railing on this person. I'm going to play it for you from JT's channel. Uh, JT, if you wouldn't mind, throw a link into the chat here so people can... Like, I go over how he basically totally switches his personality from ranting and raving to now all calm and nice. Okay. Let me show you some scripture now just to end this off. That just... This wicked devil, Pankowski, just does not take heed to. Ephesians 4, verses 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Hmm. I, I don't think that calling, saying you should get sodomized and let the sodomite rape you, I don't think that's uh, ministering grace. I think that's corrupt communication. And I think most, any sane person would agree with me on that. Uh, Colossians 2, verses 8 to 9. Beware less oil, uh, sorry, Colossians 3, not 2. Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 to 9. But now ye have put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put on the, off the old man 
with his deeds. Rich Pankowski's not put off the old man. Why? Because he's still in the old man. He's not saved. He's not born again. Plain and simple. Uh, let me see what else there is. Good, another good scripture to turn to. James chapter 3 verses 5 to 8. Even so the tongue is a little member, and, and boasteth great things, hmm, boasteth great things. Oh look what I've done, I shot down great drag queen story, or I did this, I did that. Boasteth great things. Behold, how little, or how great a matter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast of the birds, every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of the things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. That's simple. Pankowski's tongue is full of deadly poison. It's it's wicked. He's 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 not born again. This is not this is not the mouth of a born again Christian. Again, even as an atheist, I never would really thought of saying something like disgusting like that. So avoid this wicked devil, Pankowski. He is a lost servant of Rome. He may not do the whole Mary thing with the Catholics do, but he is, has the same wicked mentality and the same false gospel of the Roman Catholic One World Harlot Church of Revelation 17 and 18. So yeah, avoid him. Mark and avoid him. This is the fruit that comes out of this wicked street papist movement, you know, mainly the Reuben Israel types. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.